because even the top analysts that are out there, they are very hesitant on predicting. Cheerio. It's awful funny how all of a sudden all of our food supply is coming down with something, right? Our food supply is coming down with something. We don't know what it is, and this is how it's affecting us. It's not going to be around. You can't find it, or you can't afford it. It's one or the other, and this is what we're talking about today. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and this is Survival Preparedness for Beginners, and today we're going to be talking about the 10 items that you're going to want to be going to the store and probably picking up and buying as soon as you possibly can because they may not be around too much longer. There are a lot of different things that are happening. There are a lot of different shortages that are going on. Uh, We have the war in Ukraine that is affecting some of these products. We also do have a global, national, uh, devastating thing that is taking place we're going to cover here in a few minutes. And we also have the economic and the whole disastrous part of the supply chain issue that continues to this day. And why? Well, we just don't know. Now, do we? Well, this is what they want us to believe. I'm here today to explain to you exactly what is going on out here. And what we're going to talk about today is 10 items that you may want to really think about maybe adding a few extra to your little stockpile just in case these morons are right. Now, Now, with that being said, let's jump over and start right off with sunflower oil. Now, in case maybe all of you didn't know, 52% of all sunflower oil in this country, in this world, all comes from, yep, you guessed it, Ukraine. And what is taking place in Ukraine? Well, they're not harvesting sunflowers now, are they? Everything has come to a complete halt. There is no trade that's going on. Uh, The last time that I did check, they were not being able to get out very few ships that full of any type of products that they can get out of that country to help with the global situation. Hence the reason sunflower oil here has risen in price astronomically and the price of sunflower seeds themselves. So if you do find it, and if you ever do find it on sale, I would highly suggest if you do like using sunflower oil for whatever your cooking needs may be, you may want to pick some up really soon. Next on that list is also palm oil. Now, yes, palm oil does not come from Ukraine. It comes from another part of the world, and that is in Indonesia. And since Indonesia is also the world's leading producer of all palm oil that is used, the ongoing supply chain issues have stricken that country and uh, kind of restricted of all the making and producing of the palm oil. It only has compounded the potential problem for everything else especially vegetable oil for the upcoming future so if you do use palm oil sunflower oil vegetable oil any of these oils i would highly suggest buy an extra one the next time you go to the store because they're not going to be around too long unfortunately folks it's the time that we live in next on the list is canned food now this also goes with your canned food your pet food which would be next these are kind of all put together all right and we're talking about the tin shortage now we have the products to put into these tin cans that they like to sell us in these stores right down from your beer your soda canned water that you can purchase canned foods and your lovely pet foods for fido but 
there is still a shortage of 10 that is going on that I've been talking about forever, and it just ain't going away. This has started back in 2020 when the stores got wiped out. They shut down all the shipping and everything else from China and everything because we cannot make a tin can in this country to save our lives. So we have to wait for all this stuff to come over on these ships. Now, as the world turns and as things keep going and the way that they're going and escalating and the way they're escalating, I think we might want to start making tin cans really soon here in this country once again. But that's just me telling you all what I'm seeing. Because even the top analysts that are out there, they are very hesitant on predicting when they think that this tin can shortage will come to an end. Some say hopefully in 23 maybe 24 one even says he doesn't think this will happen until 2025 so here's what you got to do try to stock up on what you can if you can buy extra canned food canned goods and these type of things if it's stuff that you eat normally or whatever else or you have extra room you want to put them away you need to buy them now if you buy canned dog food you may want to start thinking about maybe trying to buy it by bulk if you can. See what the lifespan is on it and put it away for a rainy day because the rainy day is coming really soon. And none of these analysts have a clue of when this is going to stop. Maybe by 2025, we can start building factories here again in this country and start making our own tin cans. Seems like a pretty logical explanation to me. But who am I? You know, I'm just saying it doesn't really take much for people to figure out how we can get around this huge mess that we've been put into by our lovely government. Next on the list is lettuce products. Now, I don't know if you've all noticed, but there has been a huge shortage or a lack of lettuce in the grocery stores. And some of it does not look good at all. Now, two things have happened. All right, number one, Dole just had a huge uh, cyber attack just a few weeks ago, and they had to turn around and shut down a, quite a few of their plants. Now, when they did that, it cost them production. So everything got sold out, and it takes a while for these plants to come back up online and start putting out the production once again. The number one factor in the whole scenario here is is ever since um, 2021, there has been this huge drought that has stricken California and that whole area out west, all right? And basically, you know, I mean, you have to really realize that 50% of our lettuce crop that we eat every day, it doesn't matter if you're eating it uh, in your salad, it, it doesn't matter if you go out to Burger King, you get a Whopper and you have lettuce and tomato on it, the lettuce more than likely comes from California. It doesn't matter if you go to anywhere to go out to eat, the lettuce more than likely comes from the West. These huge droughts, and then on top of that, they ended up getting this disease called INSV. And this has spread throughout the crop of lettuce and it has affected it and it killed off a lot of the crop 20 percent of the 50 percent that is produced for us to consume here in this country where does that leave us with not a lot of lettuce so if you can find lettuce you know i mean it's not really something that you can really put up in store for the long term but if you can find it and you enjoy eating it, I would highly suggest you buy it when you can. If Maybe if you store it in an airtight container in your refrigerator, it does last a little bit longer than if you don't. Um, but it's just one way to get around it. Another one, a big one, is corn. Now, corn, we are the largest producer of corn in the world. All right, we produce the most. There has been a lot of uh, speculation on 
the effect of lack of fertilizer with the corn yields over the last year or so due to the war going on in Ukraine, sanctions against the Russians, and not being able to get the potash that we need in order to make the fertilizer that we need to get a large harvest. Now, <clears throat> here's a question for you. Canada makes a lot of potash. Why can't we try getting some from them? I don't know. You just tell me. It seems like they just want to put a stop to a lot of this. Although if you do go back and if you started really looking at history and what has taken place throughout history, there are ways, natural ways, of getting a large yield out of your crops. But nowadays, we don't want to do that. Now, do we? You know, such states as Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Nebraska, South Dakota, they all showed really bad yields at the end of this year, this past year, 2022, which means really bad, not a lot of corn to go around for this year. Because, you see, we also take and sell a lot of our seeds so other countries can plant it and grow it and everything else. And we do that to like Brazil and Ukraine and all these other countries, you know. And we're not getting enough to be able to help them out. So we're in, we're in one heck of a pickle here. Next on the list, and this is a big one, come right here from the state of Florida, my little lovely state I live in right now. And this is oranges and orange juice. And thanks to all the different hurricanes and stuff that have come through and the cold snap that we did have in the central and northern part of the state crop took a huge devastating toll i hate to break this to you to all you lovely orange juice drinkers and the people that love oranges but this is the worst yielding crop that we had last year since the 1936 1937 season go figure all right, everything seems to be coming back around. As I keep stating, history repeats itself, folks. We need to pay attention. All right, a disease called citrus greening, all right, has really started popping up in all these trees and stuff, and the loss from hurricanes have just devastated the crops, and then we had the cold snap, and that didn't help, so you have got like a one, two, three punch, you're out. And what is going to be the next juice that you like to drink? Maybe apple. I don't know, but it's probably not going to be orange juice because you're probably not going to be able to afford it. Next on the list is beef. And as we all know, beef prices have fluctuated. They go up, they come down, they go up, they come down. You know, it's like a roller coaster ride with these things. Um, what has happened is the huge drought that was out in the West, a lot of the farmers in the 2022 uh, they sold off a lot of their cattle. The prices all plummeted because there was so many cattle being slaughtered. The market was overrun, and now there's nothing to slaughter. Um, so prices have skyrocketed. Like if you go in to buy a piece of flank steak or a skirt steak, for instance, years ago in history, that was a cheap piece of meat. I mean, that's what people bought. Now you pay like uh, 12, 15 bucks a pound for one of these small little pieces of meat. And, you know, it's going to cost you like 30 bucks. <laughs> I'm just saying, the prices are on a roller coaster ride, so the biggest thing that you can do is stock your freezers when you find your stores, your farmers, if you're going to split a cow, however you want to do it, wherever you can find the deal, make sure that you are buying in bulk, and this way here, you can put it in the freezer, vacuum seal it, it's going to be good for over a year, and you've got plenty of meat for you and your family, or you can just become a vegetarian. There are a lot of vegetarians that are out there and they don't like to eat meat, which is fine. But fish is also really on the rise. Uh, next on the list, olive oil. Yes, olive oil. All the oils, though, they're just, you're just dying on us here, folks. Um, I'm not even going to really get into the whole olive oil thing. Basically, there's a shortage of that and uh, uh, it got bacteria. It's awful funny how all of a sudden all of our food supply is coming down with something, 
right? Our food supply is coming down with something. We don't know what it is, and this is how it's affecting us. It's not going to be around. You can't find it, or you can't afford it. It's one or the other, and this is what we're talking about today. The last thing on this list, which has been a very, very big pet peeve of mine, and I'm sure of many of you out there with children, is, in fact, infant formula. They are still saying that the whole crisis of the infant formula will probably go through until 2024. They're stating by the end of 2023, they're hoping to have everything back to normal. So I'm going to say 2024 because we all know that's not going to happen. Something's going to happen between now and then. It just seems like everything is a ripple effect here and we're getting attacked on all different sides. And who's to say, now this isn't being a conspiracy theory, but who's to say this isn't all part of somebody's plan? Maybe not here in America, but why would we have to start dropping bombs? We just start starving people to death in this country, in this world, and we kind of get what we want, and nobody knows something to think about. Food for thought. So I'm Survival Preparedness Beginners. All these different products that I did mention today, I would highly suggest if you can find any of these products, if you can find these products on sale and anything else, I would highly suggest that you do stock up as much as you can. You never know. It may come to a time when you go into the store and it's just not there. Infant formula, on the other hand, somebody should be shot over that whole ridiculous thing. And especially only having just a couple of plants in this country, well, that makes the infant formula is just mind-boggling to me. Piss-poor planning on somebody's part, if you understand. When it comes to kids, it's kind of a sore spot in my little heart. So I'm Survival Preparedness Beginners. I hope that you all enjoyed today's video. I hope you all stay safe. And you all out there need to keep prepping. Go out and pick up these 10 items as soon as you can and try to make sure that you are doing your part and being prepared for you and your family. Because when push comes to shove, at some point in time in the near future, with the way things are going in this world, nobody's going to be there to help you. And it may not be anybody to give you a hand. So you might want to take care of it yourself. Till the next time, folks. I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I'm out.